so Joe had it and I was drinking it straight then, but I'm mixing it right now with, uh, with a cola, a diet cola. That's also caffeine free, which I also started drinking with a lot of lemon juice. And if you drink any like Coke or fucking diet Coke or whatever the fuck it is, Pepsi with a lot of lemon, it's really fucking tasty. Thanks. So, I ran out of lemon. I should have missed it with <laughs> Thanks that. Thanks for that. Thanks yeah, for that information that, was, that I'll never use. Thank yeah, you. that was. Uh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't boring at all. Thank you for that. Oh, lemon! Can I use lemon in it? Is that yeah? Is that what I can so do? You know what's also nice sometimes? L- lemon slices in a glass of water with some ice. It's very refreshing. Like you guys, you guys ever try a finger in the butt? It's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on whose finger. I mean, you know, whoever's in the room. If you get a finger in there, go for it. Would you recommend that they put their finger in the lemon first? <laughs> <laughs> history that beats itself is a comedy podcast kevin john and greg are not experts historians or even all that smart hello and welcome to history defeats itself a comedy podcast that wonders why we as people never seem to learn from our history my name is kevin rosenquist thank you for joining us I am joined by my two co-hosts, two men who have already put in their applications for season two of The Golden Bachelor, John Banks and Greg Mitchell. How are you guys? Um, I'm. I need to start working on my abs if I'm going to be on that show. I didn't realize. I didn't realize we submitted. Greg, you said we were going to wait. I thought I submitted to the Fat Bachelor. <laughs> 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 that is so. I think that. I might make it. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think just, you got a, you got a real good chance. I just got to be Greg. I just got to be Greg. That's all you got to do is be Greg. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, you man. Doing? Good. Can't complain. You know, hockey starting. We're ha- happy about that. Greg and I are happy about that. Um, it is a good time of year. I, yeah. I would like to give a little shout out to yes. my friend Angie, who said to mention her in this podcast, because I just spoke to her before this podcast. And Angie, she may not be the only Angie in the world, but she's the best. Angie in the world. Hmm. And if you disagree with that, please email Greg Mitchell at Angie's Angie. Angie. <laughs> <laughs> what about is she, what about Angie's list? Yeah, she's that's pretty, what I said. Good. Angie's yeah. list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's I a know good one. Angie, she's very, very yeah. nice. I didn't say that Angie's are bad. I'm just saying this is What about is the Angie best one. Lena Jolie? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what her friends call her. <laughs> 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 that is a pretty good Angie, though. Yeah. And Solid Angie. Known. <laughs> Greg, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Um, pardon me while I keep an, one eye on the Montreal Canadiens Toronto Maple Leafs score. Uh, the Habs were up five to three, and it seems as though the Toronto Maple Leafs scored two goals in the last minute of the last couple minutes of the game. So it's five five. Greg, yeah. I just want to say that your toupee is looks almost real. Oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Well, you know, I did spend some time gluing it on. That's Mm -hmm. you did a good job. What about American Hustle? We talked about that when. uh, Oh yeah, his character. Who's Um, that? That's uh, that's Christian Bale. Christian Bale, yeah. At the beginning of that movie, when he's like fucking gluing the cotton balls, or it looked like a cotton ball toupee on his head. Such a great movie. Bradley Cooper comes by and misses it up. Don't don't do that to him. He doesn't like that. You remember that movie a lot better than I do. Yeah, I, I love that fucking that. movie. <laughs> that's that's whoa, dude! You're gonna ruin my next podcast. All right, is that my next my next topic? So just lay off the, the movie. Is it John Banks Hustle? Yes. Yep. John Banks Hustle. All right, mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. The American Dream. All right, shall we go? I mean, I'm ready to go. Yeah, might as well. I got a pizza all coming. Right. Well, this is you got a pizza my- coming? I don't. Fuck. Uh, what what are your go to toppings for pizza? Jalapeno? No, actually, no. <laughs> we I can't just do talked that. about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what John likes on a pizza though. On his phantom pizza that he <laughs> he ordered. I like I like going veggie. Oh, that's so fucking stupid. Now. That is so fucking stupid. Well, I mean, the whole thing's bad for you, so I'm just like I feel like if I I, I want to make it feel like it's healthy. It's not, but I want to trick myself into thinking it's healthy. And if I do veggies, then I'm like, oh no, it's fine. It's just got veggies on it. What yeah, good does that like do? If you, if, if if you trick yourself, does that give you less heart disease nope, or something? Nope, nope. Or? Same amount of heart disease. Same amount. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll just be a lot more surprised when I have the heart attack because I'm like, how could this be? Because I made good choices, but I didn't. As you're having a heart attack, that's what's going to go through your mind. Probably not. <laughs> 
I made good oh my choices God. on pizza. There's an elephant sitting on my chest. It's it's well. It's gonna also, be I shouldn't things. have that pizza. <laughs> it's gonna be oh my God, I shit my pants, but it's okay because I'm in a Coles. Or it's gonna be oh God, please don't shit my pants because I'm not in a Coles. <laughs> so those are gonna be the two things going through my mind. I just shit my pants. Good no. Good news is that I'm in a Coles. <laughs> Bad news is that I'm dying of a heart attack. Yeah, I just had some some PTSD. <laughs> you John, did. John was gonna drink, have a drink of his his uh his beer and he pulled it from off screen and it started moving really quickly towards his mouth and for a split second i thought it was his girlfriend because <laughs> like, <"Why?" laughs> i'm so used to her scrambling by in the background i didn't realize that yeah no she's a that gave kid. you ptsd <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's yeah, two is, things wrong with that wow that, there's, there's a lot wrong with that let's just move on to the episode okay my dad was right gen xers we are not tough <laughs> No, you're not a tough generation. No, Gen Xers are tough, man. Not if you're getting PTSD from my girlfriend walking by in the camera. Well, it's not like I peed myself or anything. Okay, That's I true. just we don't know. know that. I was like, oh, like that. Hey, See, no, if okay. I did that, I'd pee myself. Yesterday, I was at the gym, oh, and okay, here we go. And, and we started doing some cross training stuff, and, and I one of the things was you had to do, you had to like push a sled you know you put like 500 pounds on there or whatever you push it across the grass and then you do some like football kind of drills where you're doing quick feet quick feet quick feet and my prostate must have shifted <laughs> and my bladder started to open and i thought i was gonna piss myself so i just kept running <laughs> and i just went right to the bathroom and peed. <laughs> and i came back did you high step all the way there too no <laughs> okay i panicked did you, I panic around. did you did you as you're running did you yell my prostate <laughs> <laughs> shifted <laughs> no Oh, I did. You, you should uh, have. Come on, John. That sounds ridiculous. <laughs> like, my prostate shifted. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a grown adult. I didn't need to get a hall pass to go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, just, I, I don't know. Just some of those I can, things are pretty serious. I, I, they are, but I mean, it's not like I'm in the army. They could just, I could just leave if I want to. I'm paying for it. But I was imagining there was only one functioning urinal, and I was I was just imagining if it was occupied, what was going to happen because pee was going to come out of my body one way or another. <laughs> That's true. Speaking of I urine, have, I speaking may have just gone, had to go on. I may have just gone in the cold plunge or something. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, speaking of yes. urinals, uh, what's your topic? <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's get back to that. Hey, were yeah, we supposed to hit record? <laughs> no. Let's let's okay. let's just just let's go. Let's just go. <laughs> All right. Do you guys like monster movies? Yes. Yeah. Do you have any faves? I do. I love the thing, mm. which oh, is more God, like sci-fi thing. monstery, but I love the, the thing, thing. Is good. It's good. Been a while That's... since I've seen the thing. There's a lot of monster movies I like. I mean, if it's if it's done well, I mean, I could fucking even watch Godzilla movies. <laughs> Godzilla movies are kind of yeah. fun, actually. They're definitely yeah, fun. Especially see. the old ones. The, the do you one mean like ones horror movies? Do, like Just Halloween? monster movies. Any any kind of monster movies. Yeah, I, I like them all. I like to. I like watching scary movies. Yeah. So since it's almost Halloween, I thought we would talk about something spooky tonight. So let's discuss monsters. He did the monster match. He did the monster match. The monster match. Okay, guys, I have it to go. Graveyard smash. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we have the rights to use that. <laughs> no, absolutely not. We don't. But All I right. thank you for uh, for. Uh, sorry, that was kind of loud too, wasn't it? <laughs> it was great. It was wonderful. <laughs> that song always makes me want like mashed potatoes. <laughs> Is that why you had? You said you had to go to the bathroom, or no? I wanted to just go because it was very oh. cringy. Okay, got it. Got it. It was cringy. <laughs> the the song was okay. Well, so, you taking off your shirt. <laughs> Well, it's also cringy. Uh, every culture across time has had its monsters. Uh, these monsters are uh, often mirror the particular anxieties and concerns of their time. As societies have evolved, so have their monsters, adapting to new fears and concerns. So let's just dive right in, shall we? Yes. Uh, we're going to go back into the way back time classical myths and. Uh, talk about a few of these early societies tried to explain the unknown to give form to their fears. Uh, one of example of an early classical monster is Medusa. You guys familiar with Medusa? Yes, I am. Yeah, snakes on a plane. 
Snakes out of plane. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. If you look at Medusa, her, otherwise known as Samuel Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like you look at her, you turn into stone or something like that. That's right. That's yeah. correct. That's yeah, correct. But then why did she have the snakes? What were those for? I mean, um, scary, I guess. I don't know. I but didn't I mean, if the far. snakes are going to eat you, and if the only thing can happen is you turn into stone, it seems like the snakes are kind of benign. Or yeah, the snakes, snakes can't really do much then. Part of you turning into stone? Like, in other words, she was so vile. I guess snakes were so vile and deadly, and so she was so vile that all of that, like, she couldn't turn you into stone and she didn't. Stop look. trying to justify fucking this stupid ass. You know, maybe you should okay. stop shaming people who have snakes on their heads. That's true. I agree with that. I think You've been she, doing that for years. Yes, it's, it's starts, time. You know what? And, and I'm going to take a Medusa. stand. It stops tonight, Greg. It stops it's tonight. Ter- <laughs> okay. So Med- Medusa was originally a beautiful maiden. Uh, Poseidon seduced and essentially Man, that guy's a bastard. He essentially raped her in uh, Athena's yeah. temple. I hope she was of age. Well, that doesn't matter. I guess if you're getting raped, doesn't matter how old you are. It's bad. No. So Athena uh, did the logical thing uh, after that happened and turned uh, Medusa into a gorgon, which is a, uh, someone who has snakes for hair. You know, the classic picture that you think of. Oh, that would imply that there were more people than Medusa with snakes. So was it the stone? She just happened to be a Gorgon, and that's just what Gorgons look like. Yeah. Greg? Yeah, you're so racist against Gorgons. What kind of comb do you use for that? (laughs) Very... Like Very a comb full of, a comb full of mice. I think it's like a it's like a stick and you like knock the snakes out so they don't bite your face. You didn't even listen to my mi- mouse comb. My mice comb. I liked the mouse comb. It was solid. I'm sorry. It was solid. I listen to your stupid thing, John. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I did. In addition to her sneaky hair, she also turned those who looked at her directly into stone, as uh John and Greg mentioned uh shortly. Ago, uh, Medusa's transformation can be interpreted as a punishment for challenging the gods or as a consequence of male attention. Mm. It rep- Same thing happens if you look at John's beard. Yeah. You turn to stone? It's made out of straw, so you turn into brick. And <laughs> <laughs> so that we've taken <laughs> like the three little piggies. Yeah, ancient, we're going we're taking like Greek gods, ancient <laughs> Greece with, with yeah, the three little pigs. With nurse well, you're going with the stupid fucking beard. I mean, the straw beard. I mean, the snake beard, Medusa beard. Hurtful. Let's not say things we can't take back, Tupe. <laughs> I, Kevin, uh, please, please. We interrupt you. We apologize. Please you guys are, on. you guys have a little, there's a little tension here. Yeah. Start talking about your sex well, life again. In, in fairness. <laughs> The glue that I've been using to put my toupee down has seeped into my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's made out of snake oil, so it's m- turning me into stone. Oh, you know what I'm nice, nice. That, to bring it all yeah. back around. Hey, don't you think that, like, John and I used to work with some guy that really did have a toupee. And we were talking about, like, isn't that glue really, like, you don't want to put it in your fucking, on your scalp? Yeah. Doesn't it leak leach into your fucking blood? I don't think I don't think that's a good idea. It's all part of the blue state, man. It's all Does part Trump of the mind have a control. toupee or is that like plugs or something? Dude. Well, I think I... you can't you get them where they, they like literally put like snaps under your skin so you can actually snap the toupee down. Oh god, I don't do now. I don't that's I hope disturbing. not. Yeah. God, that just just imagine snapping it on and you know how you always gotta kinda push it extra hard and yeah. wiggle it around yeah. a little bit. Or like if it gets stuck <laughs> and it's not quite coming apart and you keep pulling up your flesh. Oh, that makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah. Or someone grabs your head and yanks you around. <laughs> yeah, don't get in a fight with someone who pulls hair. Yeah, <laughs> you know what they should do for those two pays is they should give you like the the sandpaper part or whatever one one half of Velcro, and then the wig has like the other half of Velcro on it. And you just wait. Like, yeah, just, have, why not they... just command strips? Right, just use command strips. Yeah, then you would really have to pull it. It's like mm-hmm. snap. So uh, Medusa <laughs> also represents the dangers of female rage, beauty, and power, and represents the fear of powerful women and the retribution that they might face for stepping out of their traditional roles. Was she in that band Hole? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Bass player. Um, <laughs> t- today... <laughs> Today, Medusa is sometimes seen as a symbol of female empowerment and resistance against patriarchal oppression. I don't know why I said oppression like that. (laughs) Because it's happy. Because we're all like we're we all were very nervous. We've we've all benefited from it. We know it. (laughs) And we know 
things are like going the other way and we're really happy about it because we're liberal guys but also this part of us like oh god we don't blame us for everything yeah we didn't don't, do it all don't speak for me john okay i'm sorry it's rude he is a, he is a radical right-wing conservative <laughs> everybody knows true. this that is true everybody okay so another uh example uh from the uh the classical uh, or or yeah, classical period. And that's in the classical period. It doesn't matter. From long ago, uh, the Minotaur and the Labyrinth. Are you guys familiar with Minotaurs? Yeah, I'm familiar with David Bowie in the Labyrinth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's yes. That's true. Yep. Yep. I know. I know. With a Minotaur, you if you put them in a Coca Cola, it will like explode. Oh, that's Mentos. Like oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Mentos. Min- Minotaurs are the fresh makers. I'm so confused. <laughs> I think it's Diet Coke. I don't think regular Coke does that. Does I might not? be wrong. We should do Regular Coke takes rust off a nail. <laughs> it also dissolves a tooth in 30 days. Oh. It's also really good to clean out your toilet with. It's also delicious. Gets blood <laughs> off of roads. Good for corrosive batteries. Coca-Cola. It's, it's, it's not it's, just sugary water. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's also it's really not, good if you squeeze lemon juice ingest. in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Minotaur is a mythical creature with the head of a bull and the body of a man. It is known for dwelling within the heart of the intricate labyrinth on the island of Crete, where it was fed an annual tribute of youths and maidens to satisfy its voracious appetite. Well, I hope so. If it's only going to eat once a year, it might as well get youths and youths. maidens. Well, wait, and that's what's my when, <laughs> when, at what age are you no longer a youth? That's true. That's true. I mean, I don't know when that yeah. cutoff is. Uh, it varies by state. <laughs> <laughs> In so Greece, it was 15. Athens, actually, those <laughs> bastards were 13. Very yeah. creepy. Mm-hmm. Different. Just different. Yeah. No. Different time and place. Yeah. Got to respect the, it. The Minotaur's birth was the result of a curse placed upon Queen P- Pasiphae of Crete. King uh, Minos, her husband, had promised to sacrifice a beautiful white bull to Poseidon. Baby, but, baby, baby, I promise I'm going <laughs> to sacrifice a just, white bull for you. Just, white bull out there? just please Look stay. I'm bull. so sorry I forgot our anniversary. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, you know what? I'm going to kill that fucking white bull for you because I'm a jerk and I forget. Well, John, he, he reneged on this vow and kept the bull for himself. Oh, John, for someone that's studied improv, you really interrupt people when they're starting to improv instead of like, yes, anding. you're just like, I'm going to step over this and start saying my own thing. <laughs> so Minotaurs, um, in retribution, Poseidon made <laughs> Pasiphae fall in love with the bull, leading to the birth of the Minotaur. So she banged that was the bull. a painful fucking birth. She 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 banged the bull. Yeah, got got a Minotaur out of it. Uh, to hide the shameful secret, King Minos commissioned the famed craftsman Daedalus to build the labyrinth, an intricate maze to confine the creature. And the Minotaur is a symbol of unchecked passions, raw animal nature, and the dark primal instincts that reside within humanity. I do hope she had a C-section. No, I think that was I think that was a natural birth. <laughs> had to have been. Man, it was a breech baby, I, I, so it actually wasn't that bad. That sounds worse. No, well, because the, worse. Pointy, the pointy stuff is coming out last. <laughs> is that good? I mean, if you're having yes, if you have a vagina, I think that's good. Like if you're gonna give birth to a bull person. I think that you want that bull person to go out feet first because you don't want the the horns getting stuck in your. Well, the inside. horns are coming out no matter what. Yeah, so. but there's a pointy side and a not pointy side. But you got to believe, think that the the point the, the the horns are pretty small at birth. You know, like a calf, they're just sort of nubs. <laughs> I don't think there's like you know Texas Longhorns sticking. First of out all, there. I'm neither of you are an expert in minotaurs, <laughs> so you don't know. You don't know what their horns are like. Well, I, I I actually I studied it. I have a PhD. <laughs> Minot- I have a- minotaurology. Eat that. And a minor in jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Two very different but related topics. I think it's better. I don't know why that's so funny, well, but it is. My fallback plan was jazz. <laughs> if the Minotaur thing didn't this pay Minotaur out. thing doesn't pan out. Because everyone knows jazz musicians <laughs> are the wealthiest. Yeah, you know, it's the it's the it's a gross. Jack and I will drop. <laughs> that's scat. Sorry, it could be part of jazz. And that's true. That you Both have horns. I actually love, <laughs> actually love jazz, but that is great. I like that. that is, yeah, jazz horns. is really good. Yeah. Hey, I was thinking about this. The um, about jazz. The are, if the head, if oh. the head does come out first, it could be painful. It could be more painful that way, John. But as the head come, as it actually the head comes out, then you're like, ah, at least it's a normal body. 
after that. <laughs> but if you're giving birth to a breech baby first, you're like, oh, look at these yeah. feet, knees, got everything. And yeah. then you're like, holy fuck, what happened to that head? <laughs> I made a bull baby. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't be that surprised if you fucked a bull. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably thinking... There's no way I'm going to get pregnant. <laughs> like, yeah. There's no way the gods will allow this. <laughs> Were you species. pregnant? <laughs> the bull told her that he was wearing a condom. <laughs> no, he's I had a vasectomy. It's yeah, fine. baby. No, I can't get pregnant. It's, yeah. I can't get anyone pregnant. It's a it's, those, it's, those giant balls attached to me. <laughs> they don't work. <laughs> they don't work at all. <laughs> you probably should have paid more attention on uh, <laughs> at your at your visits to the doctor when they did. The, <laughs> what's that thing called? Sonogram. <laughs> The ultrasound, yeah. At the you know the DJ booth. <laughs> when, yeah, when the uh, when the, the the ultrasound technician was like, "Huh, it's <laughs> weird." Did you uh, fuck a bull? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know how to ask you, this, but did you fuck a, a white bull who told you he was wearing a condom because he was not? <laughs> he definitely was not wearing a condom. Fourth time this week, <laughs> and the mom's like, "No, no, 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 no! Don't tell the gender." <laughs> I don't want to know gender. I don't want to, I don't want to know. We're going to do a uh, reveal. That's not that's not where I was going with this. Uh, so your baby has four hearts. <laughs> and a pierced nose. <laughs> He's born, born with a pierced nose. Like a ball. Your bull baby is already a rebel. <laughs> came out with a nose ring. It's, this, this, this guy's not going to college. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's move on from from bull fucking and go to the <laughs> Middle Ages. Uh a I time like that's a pretty big I jump. think it's yeah, I think it's related. <laughs> I feel like there was more animal to human sex in that time period. <laughs> yeah, he just glosses over it. <laughs> So the Middle Ages, a time of societal consolidation around powerful entities like the church. A big uh monster of the time were dragons. Uh, they exist in many cultures with variations in appearance and symbolism. So there were Eastern dragons, which were primarily in Chinese, Korean, and Japanese cultures, and they were seen as benevolent, wise, and associated with water sources and weather, and they symbolized power, strength, and good luck. I feel and like that's why a lot of people get uh, dragon Japanese-style tattoos. Yeah, I did not know that they meant uh, good luck. Yeah. So uh, Western dragons. I mean, unless they breathe fire on you. <laughs> well, that's the Western dragon. They are often depicted as fire breathing winged and uh, were often described to be hoarding treasures. They viewed uh, they were viewed as threats, often requiring a hero to slay them. And they symbolized chaos, greed and the unknown. Their hoarding can be interpreted as an unchecked accumulation of wealth or power. Dragons know how to hang on to some coin. Right? Like, they they are very uh they're very thrifty. Those those dragons, you know. They're they can, greedy. They're not they thrifty. Can, they can stretch they're, a dollar. They can stretch oh, they a can? dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not buying shit on Amazon. <laughs> they're budget yeah. dragons. They're budget <laughs> dragons. Yeah. They you know, they they invest, you know. They, <laughs> yeah. What they get they're fire, right? The fire uh, what is it? Uh, financial independence retire early. That's that's not fire out of the mouth. They're literally financial <laughs> dragons. They're about Saving up for about 15, 20 years, and then you have a very simple life and you retire early. Dragons, that's what What's they are. What's that acronym again? Fire. It, it's uh, uh, Financial Independence Retire Early. That's an I can't thing. believe how genius that observation was for this. Yeah, that was a good was, one. That was really good. Especially yeah, since yeah. I gave you shit about the lack of improv skills. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's been back. <laughs> or, <laughs> he's been funnier than you, Greg. Thank you. Thank, yeah, you know well, he's, is, he's had me laughing pretty good. So all I'll ever ask of you. Step Tyler. it up. Uh, um, first of all, fuck you. Uh -huh. Second of all, a comedy is subjective and mm -hmm. everybody knows that John Banks gives you money to laugh at his jokes. Yeah. Well, you don't. <laughs> ah, big burn. <laughs> John got money. So, uh, John's another an thing idiot. was witches, demons, and the role of religion, uh, in medieval Europe, uh, there was a time when the church held significant power and anything that didn't conform to religious norms was viewed with suspicion. There was a fear of paganism. Uh, so before Christianity spread widely, many European regions practiced pagan religions, which are basically any religions that aren't Christianity or Judaism. 
As the church sought to consolidate power, it demonized these old beliefs and practices. I can't believe that the church would do that. I, you I, know, I was surprised I, too. Yeah, I was surprised too. Usually uh, they're just on the up and up and not really yeah. killing people for no reason. They're yeah. just trying to help people normally. But yeah. in this particular one isolated incident, <laughs> they were... <laughs> well, there was a weren't. few little... There was like a, f- a couple of days in there, a little yeah. torture, persecution. We'll, get it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that yeah. in a little bit. Um, kind of started from day one with the whole <laughs> Adam and Eve thing. <laughs> Here's a snake. Hey, see this delicious apple? Don't eat it. Don't eat. Don't eat it. I know you're starving. You're naked and you're hungry. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. But they weren't hungry. Eat it. They weren't hungry. They had everything they want. That was the whole point. They had. They could have anything in the world. Anything. It's it's fucking a fairy tale. Unless the thing that they could dream of was an apple, and then they can have that because that makes sense. It makes sense to allow somebody to have everything except one thing. Because if you let them have everything, you spoil the child. You keep one thing. But also, can I just, I mean, apples aren't that great. I mean, they're fine. No, I know. Could they get get like sushi? Yeah, I mean, I feel like they could get anything they wanted, you know. They could have tiramisu. They could have tiramisu (laughs) every day. (laughs) They're a bag of Doritos. I take the bag of Doritos over the apple any day. There's a Taco Bell drive through right. They're in they're in Garden of Eden, so they're never gonna like have heart problems or die, right? They can just fucking whatever they want. God, they really fucked us all over, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. They, they screwed things up for themselves too. They had a really good situation. All they had for to do was eat. Fucking apple. Over I bet an you apple. that apple was mealy too. <laughs> had a worm in it. Yeah. Well, they did live in a desert where there were no fucking apples. <laughs> so yeah, they came, they had to import them from somewhere. Mm. So, God, yeah. how long did that take back then? There was nobody else on the planet. No, that, that, so well, then they, they were would, for sure mealy. They would actually, <laughs> no, no, what they would do is they would plant little apple trees in the buggy. And as they came across over the years, those trees would bearing fruit by the time they got there. How long did they have to wait for that? Like 13, 14 years. Do you think, tell, er, us, tell us more. Do you think Eve ever shaved her pubes? <laughs> <laughs> no, she, no, she, she they, no. She was born with a, a V. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you think she had an airstrip or a landing strip? I, I mean? just told you. <laughs> God, you don't listen to me. You say I don't yes and. I listen to you. I just I, I was yes ending. I thought maybe we would take it to one place better. So I don't know. Term- <laughs> you, do you think, for in fairness, we should talk about about Adam's pubes? We should. Because I don't want to get hung yeah. up on on Eve's and yeah, that, that, some of our listeners. That guy definitely mm-hmm. waxes balls, definitely. So he was like a turtle shell down there, and she had a V. Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? Well, he was like full bush above the penis. Oh. Everything below waxed, even even the BH. <laughs> Smooth. So he waxed everything, but left like a huge, just yeah. bushy, yeah, yeah, yeah. huge uh, patch. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he was trying to be different back then. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, did yeah. he have an eight pack? Was he like Jesus? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and he also had one extra rib for a while. I, I would shave everything if I had that kind of definition. I feel like I would <laughs> shave everything too. Yeah. I mean, why leave? Why leave the bush? You know, mystery. Going to look God, ridiculous. Like, you guys don't even know the art of seduction, do you? <laughs> I mean, like, what well, color hair did he have? Was it a dark bush? In fairness, I, I think, think so. we should not listen to John Banks and that beard because he would probably tie it into his pubes if he could. Well, that's what he's going for. Well, I'm gonna actually. I'm, almost, I'm gonna braid my chest hair into my beard hair into my stomach hair all the way down. Yeah, it's just to your be, pubes. Yep, my my pubis. That is such a disturbing image. You're welcome. And then, how about your how about your big toe hair? You can tie that into it too. Toe I've just got a couple, like three or four, and I can't really tie to that. I gotta. Stop, I really gross. do gotta stop at my pubis because after yeah, I Greg, are long ridiculous. Enough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you should ever stop. I mean, I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. It's just science. Okay. The term witch became associated with anyone, mostly women, who practiced old rituals, used herbal medicines, or simply didn't fit in with societal norms. Accusations of witchcraft became a tool to control or eliminate undesirable elements in society. That also was a very effective tool. Like, man, they... That church. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that it worked church. Well. It worked well. Yeah. They weren't dumb. The Inquisition, uh, which was established by the Catholic Church to combat heresy, soon became a tool of political and societal control. The Inquisition didn't just target alleged witches, but also scientists, philosophers, and anyone deemed a threat to the church's power. And if you've ever seen any of the tools of the Inquisition, it's fucking nasty. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't admit to being whatever they 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are you a monster? Absolutely. Can yes. you stop <laughs> trying to draw and quarter me right yeah. now? Just burn me. I like just please. Like oh. whatever. I'll tell you whatever you want. Stop torturing me. You can burn me, but just yeah. Don't don't let me die in this dungeon. You know, what a crazy crazy thing to even think about. Like no, yeah, no. Oh God. I'm so glad I was born now. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I know we got problems, but like, man. Not those kind of problems. Not the uh, not yeah, not being drawn and quartered. Yeah. Hard well, we're pretty pass. pretty close. Yeah. Are we? <laughs> Am I, should I be worried? There is some bad shit happening, yeah. There's some I know happening. there's bad shit happening, but uh I, I don't I hope no one's getting drawn and quartered. There was even something called the Malleus. Well, in fairness, in fairness, there were people that were getting uh, raped and then tied to the back of cars and dragged. Don't mean to bring it down. In the in the Middle Ages? No, this just no, happened in this, in this, a couple uh, days ago. Hamas evasion. Oh, invasion oh, oh. Into that. <clears throat> yes, we don't. We don't. Not, we don't. Not great. Yeah. Um, there was even something called the Malleus Maleficarum, which I think I did pretty well on pronunciation, a, which was a manual for witch hunters that played a significant role in the witch craze. Oh, we've talked it about de- this before. It Did we? It yeah. detailed yeah. how to identify, interrogate, and punish witches, further entrenching the fear of witches in society. I don't remember the manual. We it get mentioned in one of the. I did a witches episode, and I get. Mentioned oh, you did a talk. witchcraft episode. That's right. I knew we did talk about witches, but I couldn't yeah. remember in what. what yeah. uh, it, it was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Now you know, we've been doing this for four and a half years. Wait, what? We've been doing this we podcast for four and a half years. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I've wasted so much of my life. I didn't know. <laughs> I thought it's been three weeks. Has it not been three weeks? I don't think that's that long. Actually, four and a half years. It feels like a lot longer. I yeah. enjoy spending time with you guys. I love this podcast. We better. We're doing this for ourselves. Yeah, just for us. I'm and doing Angie. it for the money. Greg, thank you so much for paying me $1 million every episode. <laughs> yeah, don't cash the check yet. Yeah, please please hold on to that for a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta just I just got to move some money around for the next 90 or 100 years, and then we're good. I got to move some. Hey, Greg, have you moved that money around yet? Because <laughs> <laughs> I need knee surgery, and I, I literally, my knees are gone. <laughs> so I need Your that money. Knees. That's that's an expensive surgery. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I need the money. I don't need all a million, but I that's it. listen, we'll talk about this when we hop off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are you gonna have like the, the knees of kangaroos transplanted on your yes. like, legs? <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's not a bad idea. Hopping is way more effective. You ever watch those guys? They get around super fast. Yeah. Kangaroos? Fuck yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Plus they lift they're always in the gym. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they can <laughs> box. Those they're guys really are boxers. fucking jacked. Yeah. 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 They don't miss leg day or arm day. Or creatine. Or ab day. <laughs> creatine. <laughs> While religion played a crucial role, uh, the witch hunts can also be tied to societal upheavals, plagues, economic downturns, and more. Witches became convenient scapegoats for societal problems. Yeah, it sounds like they're bit, getting blamed for everything. They were, I, yeah. I mean, you know, again, as far as I, I know, the only thing they're guilty of is the Blair Witch Project. Yes, I loved that movie. I did too. It was great. I saw it again recently. Nope, <laughs> didn't really, because I saw it. I saw it. I mean, not that recently, but years ago, and it still freaked me out. It did? Yeah. There's that one scene at the end that freaks you out a little bit. Yeah, the end scene's great, yeah. And also the booger the scene. I like the, the booger, booger scene. The booger scene's really good. Yeah, that's The booger the, scene's pretty solid. Yeah. 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 Then they did call it the booger scene. Yeah. No, that's yeah, how it was in script. the script. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Page 47. Wait. Booger scene. There was a script? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, that whole thing was... I thought it was, was, thought it was yeah. a doc. <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> That changes everything. Yeah. yeah. Hollywood's such a fucking lie. Yes. Yeah. You can't believe no. Hollywood. Who can you believe? <laughs> Aquaman. Not real. <laughs> Wait, you can believe Aquaman? <laughs> no, I said he's Aquaman not real. 2024. <laughs> I was going to say that guy's got nothing to lose. He doesn't even live on the same surface that we do. That's no. true. That's true. <clears throat> All right. Monsters in the modern world. Yay! Uh, let's move forward to the Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution, uh, which was an era marked by rapid societal changes, scientific discoveries, and philosophical revolutions. Frankenstein's Monster, uh, created by Mary Shelley in her novel Frankenstein, was written during the dawn of the Industrial Age. The novel reflected societal concerns with unchecked scientific and industrial progress. 
So Rip. I never I never read that book and I never really saw a Frankenstein movie. No. What did that monster do besides walk around with his arms outstretched going, uh, uh. He did he did a lot of like white collar crimes that they don't mm-hmm. talk about a yeah. lot in the movie. In the book. What a, the book what a monster. Like, well, yeah, was, I mean, yeah. He was like Bernie Madoff. Yeah, he did, he literally <laughs> just he wiped out a lot of the villagers 401ks. <laughs> yeah, he up. took advantage of older women who you know, didn't have much, yeah. uh, you know, had had money, but didn't have yeah. much uh, else going for them. No family and all that stuff. And and uh, so what he romanced them. He romanced them. But it was less sexual and more just, you yeah. know, about well, having he's a good listener. companionship, you yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds can't. like he was actually kind of nice. Well, he can't well, talk. until he until he took all their money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and left them and left them. He was in Nigeria for a while and did this whole email scam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I know that's cute, but I, it was a genuine question. What the fuck did he do? I well, he was confined <laughs> to he he was he was uh, locked up. You know, uh, Doctor Frankenstein didn't want him out, and he got out. And uh, he boy, roamed the country, countryside and like skipped stones in a pond. I'm pretty or sure this is the plot to uh, Breaking Three. <laughs> it never <laughs> happened. They never actually made it. But this, I think, I read a treatment about it. It it, it was it was tough to follow up Electric Boogaloo. You know, it <laughs> you really was. You cannot follow up with that. I mean, you're never, I mean, and you're never going to beat that title. No, 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 no. That was and, like that. That uh, was you know, the once they saved the franchise. community center. What was ha- what was there left to be done? You know. <laughs> No, at that point, it's just they're just trying to get that franchise money. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. You want the franchise? A lot of those breakdancers they took out to pasture and you know let run. <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we don't know what Frankenstein was actually. I don't. Doing. I don't. No, because Frankenstein. I, I saw the. I never is, read the book. I saw the, it a long the movie a long time ago. The point of the book. It's, it's the point of the story is that it's not. It's that the the group is the monster, not him. He just wanted love. He just wanted, yeah, right. He was like yeah. made, but he didn't, you know, he was just like basically because he was like such a monster. He looked so, you know, he was so frightening. He was such an abomination of nature that he he deserved death. But he wasn't mm-hmm. even an abomination of nature because he was created and he had those fucking spark plugs coming out of his neck. And the only way you could start them up was to get your jumper cables Fine. on them. And he was an abomination zip. of nurture. <laughs> like, but the point is, I feel like okay. you're splitting hairs here, but you don't need to, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, we're spending a lot more time on the Frankenstein part than I thought we would. I just got browbeat a little bit, and I feel feel like I deserved it. (laughs) It's always funny when you're doing these topics and you think like, "Oh, they're going to talk about like we'll we'll get stuck on this for a long time," and you go right by it, and the thing you just would never think you'd talk about—that's what we talk about. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's because we're not smart. I just don't know how. Like, I know what the werewolf did. I think it's a good question. I think I even know what Dracula did. I don't really know Frankenstein. Well, Dracula just loved too many. He just he loved you and too, you a little no too a little too deep <laughs> a little too deep yeah, he was a little he was a little the, aggressive a little aggressive yeah he just wanted to change people too much you know he well, should just I mean, let people the thing, be themselves like, in vampire movies they're always well not all but most vampire movies like the vampire's always really hot so it's like all right I'm sure <laughs> go ahead eat me yeah well, whatever yeah, right? have you seen Nosferatu yeah. <laughs> yum yum <laughs> I like Idea. women bald and saggy, <laughs> almost as death. I can't wait. I can't wait till Kevin gets to Count Chocula. It's <laughs> my favorite monster. <laughs> so uh, he's got a really good chin. Frankenstein uh, story is used today as a cautionary tale about the dangers of scientific and technical advancements without considering moral and ethical Im- uh, implications, which is part of what John was talking about. In that, you know, he was created. And he was this abomination, but he himself wanted to be, he thought he was normal and he wanted to be normal and he couldn't. I mean, do you feel like this is your autobiography, Greg? No, but I'm just thinking as Kevin's saying that, it sounds exactly like the plot from that Steven Spielberg movie, Fast and Artificial the Intelligence. Oh, was it AI, that <laughs> kid that was a robot? Time. Yeah. He yeah. wanted to be human and then, God, I could never be serious. Man, for one second, I just wanted to be. Serious. I know the movie you're talking about. I actually never saw it. I it's do know movie. the movie you're talking about with Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Uh, in Victorian society, the late 19th century was characterized by strict, strict societal norms. There was a defined way to behave, and deviations were not just frowned upon, but often ostracized. Dr. Jekyll was a respectable doctor and a pillar of society and represents the ideal Victorian gentleman. 
His transformation into Mr. Hyde is a physical manifestation of his suppressed desires and darker urges. Hyde is free from societal constraints, behaving violently and without morality. Kind of a genius idea. Yeah. I, I, for I a story. Yeah. It's it's pretty neat how they they kind of took the way society, I guess all good art is a reflection about the woes of society. I don't know. I kind of yeah, I kind of like the way you're describing it. It's it's uh, pretty brilliant. Well, Jekyll's potion, which transforms him, can be seen as a critique of society's reliance on substances to escape reality or to become someone else temporarily. Whoa, good, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a good thing that. we got away from that. <laughs> it sure is. And three. Hey, you, I'm going to go grab some ath- absinthe. And, um, <laughs> absinthe? A- ab- absinthe? Abs- That's a hard word to pronounce. It really is. It is a hard word to pronounce. I'm never sure. I'm going to grab right. absinthe so right. in Massachusetts. <laughs> The novella, hey, sir. I was just in fucking Massachusetts, and I had to tell everybody I knew the way John Banks says it. <laughs> You're like, I got this dumbass friend who it's can't like speak the, like a the normal clerk person. at the grocery store, just like, yeah. yeah. You're like, listen to this clerk? idiot. Who says clerk? Is that? Yeah. He's like, just pay for your Sam Adams and get out of here. <laughs> The novella serves as a commentary on the duality of human nature and how societal repression can lead to extreme dichotomies in personality. So yes, that's a very that's a very interesting, especially back then, being that it, there was there were it was prim and proper in ways that you were supposed to behave, and Doctor Hyde was the one breaking away from that, jerking off in public. They yeah, really I mean, yeah, Doctor Hyde were, sounds like the, the more fun. Their version. their podcast back then were really censored. Really? Like you couldn't make the masturbation jokes we make? No. No, no. You could even say good, too close to God. Fuck. Oops. Can't say that either. Nope. nope. Definitely not. Wait, was Dr. Jekyll the good one or was Mr. Hyde the good one? Dr. Jekyll was the good one. Mr. Yeah. Hyde was the bad one. Which okay. is very well, depends. I guess, actually, Craig, it depends on who you define good and bad. Yeah. And John just told me I shouldn't even say good. Well, no, I mean, it's too close to God. Right. I understand. Now. You can say whatever you want now. I'm saying if, if we were in the 19th century. If we were in the 19th century, these microphones would be really funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> we'd all be basically on opium imagining this. <laughs> yes, this would not be a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, <laughs> who knows? maybe we are. Yeah. yeah. God, I hope so. That would be, be great. King Kong. The story revolves Fuck around... Yeah. around a giant ape captured from an exotic island and brought to New York City for exhibition. He uh, King Kong represents the raw power and majest- majesty of nature. While his I capture- could just listen to Kevin all night know, give movie reviews. <laughs> it signifies the that human- one with Jack Black when Jack Black was in it, and he's like filming Kong, and like people are getting Skull- eaten. Stuff. Skull he's like, Island, Shh. Skull Island, yeah. is that what it was? Skull Island. That was Peter I'm Jackson. getting a, yeah. I'm getting a mm-hmm. shot. <laughs> the. Uh, uh, while his capture and exhibition in New York signify the human desire to conquer and commercialize the wild, the combat work arises when nature embodied by Kong resists its, cha- its shackles. The narrative of venturing into a distant primitive land and capturing a mighty beast reflects themes of colonial exploitation and the Western fascination with exotic locales. So again, this is, oh, and also one more thing. The portrayal of Skull Island's inhabitants often mirrors racial and cultural stereotypes, emphasizing the areas, uh, the era's colonial gaze. So again, it's all just the monsters however, we created are, are reflective of the times. However, the indigenous people of Skull Island knew how to fucking survive with Kong being on that uh, there and not so much getting fucking eaten or thrown they could coexist, feet. which yeah, we could, could not co- coexist with Kong because we we exploited him. We we did exploit him. What a bunch of fucking assholes we are. Especially the three of us. You ever see him without a shirt on? He look good. I've Who, never Kong? seen him with a shirt on, to be honest with you. Oh, Kong? Kong. Are you talking about King Kong? King Kong. He's jacked. We hit the gym together, and sometimes he'll take a shirt off. But usually when he comes, he's wearing a shirt and shorts. <laughs> so, <laughs> like board shorts? And kicks. Jorts. He's wearing, he's wearing his shorts. kicks. He's got to be wearing And I always, I always say, cool kicks, kid. <laughs> and it's like, okay, John, I won't eat you this time. <laughs> Let's do some squats. <laughs> no, give me a super <laughs> shot. Hey, seriously, 
this this today's your turn to buy the peanut butter protein shake. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of getting stuck with the bill. Do you think you should wax my back? <laughs> It's going to show so much more definition. No, bro. It's going to show all your steroid zits. That's true. You don't know what your complexion is like, <laughs> is like under there. It's a risk you should take. Kong, no, no word complexion mean. Kong, eat you now. <laughs> but you said you were going to. Damn it, Kong. Kong fickle. <laughs> Roid rage. Kong, not Kong. man of his word. <laughs> Kong make hasty decision. <laughs> Kong, he lull you, lull you into a sense of confidence, and then he throw you into dinosaur. Kong, Kong invite you over to his house, have dinner five, six times <laughs> before he kill you. <laughs> lull you into sense of companionship <laughs> and friendship. Try to get the, try to get the third base. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing makes meat tender like broken heart. <laughs> like, God damn, God. Oh, man. He is a monster. That son of a bitch. <laughs> he, knows, he knows where all your sweet spots are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, while you're up, get Kong more Doritos. <laughs> you know Kong likes spicy wrench. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. So after World War II, <laughs> the uh, Kevin, stop talking or I put you in my butthole again. <laughs> I can't do it again, Kong. I can't. Kong gonna show. <laughs> Kong, Kong gonna show you what jalapeno pizza really do. So after World War II... So the, before the episode started, we were talking about toppings on pizza and how it could affect your dry, dry, digestive system. And Kevin said he wouldn't eat jalapenos on pizza anymore. jalapenos on pizza anymore. I had to put the kibosh on that. But Kong did not. No. <laughs> and I, I'd rather Kong not be dip Kevin in mayonnaise. <laughs> I don't know. All right, go. Go, Kevin. Go, go now. Go now. He's down. So, He's down. He's going to be out for a while. After After World War II, the horrors of war gave way to new fears, and that would, of course, be nuclear annihilation. Oh, shit. Post, that's a big monster. Post-World War II, Japan was grappling with the aftermath of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The fear of radiation was palpable. Enter Godzilla. Oh, fuck yeah. The creature's origin. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Shrek, shorter you arms. John, shorter arms. <laughs> <laughs> What's Godzilla supposed to do with these stupid yeah. fucking arms? Yeah, sure. Well, he's got. Doesn't he have like fire breath or lightning breath? Or wouldn't it be does, funny? Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if the only way that he could set his fucking his his breath on fire was to light like a Zippo, and his arms <laughs> his arms are too short, and he's like trying to like he's trying to. That's why get he's a, so mad. You know? <laughs> He, just, he, fi he finally found an aim and flame, and then it was much better. <laughs> oh, yeah, those are good. Uh, oh. The creature's origin in the 1954 film is directly tied to nuclear testing in the Pacific. It's not just a monster. It's a radioactive entity birthed from mankind's own destructive capabilities. The creature's rampage through Tokyo can be seen as a representation of the nuclear devastation Japan faced, with Godzilla acting as both the bomb and the after effects of radiation. While Godzilla is intrinsically linked to Japan's <laughs> nuclear trauma, the monster's popularity worldwide underscores the global fear of nuclear war during the Cold War era. Greg, you find nuclear war very humorous, I see. I don't, but I was thinking about this entry I made on the New Yorker on a New Yorker cartoon caption contest. Are you guys familiar with that? Yeah. I'm you did one of those? That. Yeah. Well, I, I entered one. And I, it didn't win, but I think it was the fucking funniest entry I ever did. And it was basically two King Kongs, like in the middle of a city and they're in the middle of doing their destruction. And one is obviously talking to the other one. And your job as, as a reader is to enter a caption for that. 
And my caption was, and it's going to sound stupid now because I built it up to <laughs> But my, ca- yeah. my so caption. What is the lesson was, that we should learn from this? <laughs> I'm going to say that my caption anyway. <laughs> my caption was, can you believe I almost called in sick today? <laughs> But you having... know what? Yeah. That's very New Yorker cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really is. is. Yeah. That is. Yeah. <laughs> so on to the zombie apocalypse. Oh. Oh shit. I saw that. I know. So, oh, can I guess what this is about? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, can I really? I don't, yeah, want, sure. I don't want to root for you. I don't want to root for you. No, no, you, no, no, no. I, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, because I, I would imagine zombies are going to be about basically like being worker drones. Like we're, we're all just like slaves to this economic system and capitalism. And so we're just zombies. We go through our lives unaware and eat brains. <laughs> so, That's so close. That's so not, close. Not really, but I think it that. Was, that Yours is good, but the, I, I think, think the, real, the real answer is that cranberry song. Yeah. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, yep. so it actually it, it, there's there's I like John's John's answer better though. That zombies song sucked. Zombies chase back <laughs> to Haitian folklore, uh, where they were the reanimated dead brought back to life through voodoo. But modern zombies, popularized by movies like Night of the Living Dead and the Walking AMC's The Walking Dead, among many many others, represents societal breakdown, the spread of contagion, and the fear of the mindless. Word. Mm. So maybe that kind of st- that that mindless horde thing kind, tie of, in. kind of ties into what John said. Yeah, I like what John said better. I think it, what John said was great. Like it holds up a mirror to our current society. Man. In modern narrative, zombies often symbolize societal collapse, either through rampant consumerism or fears of uh, uh, pandemics. But you know what? Our society is so shitty right now. The only thing that makes me feel good is buying shit on Amazon Prime. It does feel good. And it gets there. And then so you get fast. it the next day. It's so fast. How well, here's the thing? You don't get it the next. Here's the thing. Let's let's oh, do the world. Get that stupid message that it's been delayed. Yeah. Fuck the that. The world goes crazy, right? Full out nuclear war. Would you rather be at home watching a really good TV show or reading a book? TV show, obviously. So you're gonna <laughs> buy TV off of Amazon, and that's what gives us joy and safety. Mm-hmm. We may die, but we're gonna die with technology all around us. Or you could be a tool and go to the library. <laughs> <laughs> no, those jerks. That's dumb. Did you know that you can you can rent stuff from or you can you can take out stuff like like Kindle kind of books from the yeah. library? Yeah, I didn't know that. My dad yeah. told me that. That's pretty cool. But the library like, hey, like Kevin, great how do you return that? I don't understand. So it's like basically like they, have, <laughs> they, they have so many digital copies, and then and then you get the digital copy for a certain amount of time, and then okay. they just take it back. Like you don't return it. Well, they well can I, just, well, I, I can just I can just screenshot it though, <laughs> like like a three hundred page book. I just could always take have me some it. Time, but yeah, you could always have it. If I you want. Yeah, I don't it. think anyone's saying I'm you not going to read a book in three weeks. It's not happening. You know, you could check out a book from the library and like photocopy every page if you wanted to. Also, Mary what Shelley's it, Frankenstein. Greg? You should check that out. It's a very good book. Oh I'm yeah, just, yeah, I've heard, I've heard. I don't understand what he does though. He just he just goes. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he's just got, you know, and he's really got a blockhead it's, it's and, a, and spark plugs. It's a story about a man with hemorrhoids. <laughs> the spark plugs represent the little bubbly hemorrhoids. They so let's move into <laughs> get a little bit more modern here with oh. technologies monsters. I thought zombies was pretty. Oh, I'm sorry. Modern. John, were you, I've, I didn't. I thought you were. That were wasn't you, me. That was Greg. I'm done. Oh, it was Greg. I, I, I was saying John, that you were I pointing thought. at your nipples. I thought maybe you were going somewhere with that. Oh, I was okay. just rubbing my nipples because. Oh, OK, you know what? Thought I was on a different webcam. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> That's Thursday night. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Gotta get those bills paid, you know. <laughs> this um, podcast's not doing it. No, no, no. We we owe him a lot of money if it's a million dollars an episode. Um But we do like John's nipples. Thank yes. you. Who doesn't? They're nice. As text as technology advances, so do our anxieties. AI and robots are obviously a big uh, concern right now. The idea that AI might one day surpass human intelligence and possibly see us as a redundant, see us as redundant or a threat leading to humanity's downfall. Robot replacements, uh, you know, could replace uh, jobs leading to economic chaos and societal restructuring. I didn't, I didn't realize this. I remember when I, when I was, uh, uh, I took a film class in college and we watched a movie like called Greg Metro- right now. We, we we watched a movie called Metropolis. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the movie Metropolis. It's a I've 19- seen it. it was really good. 
1927 silent film. And I kind of forgot that it, so it features Maria, a robot used to manipulate the masses touching on concerns about technology's uh, potential to deceive and control. I didn't, I guess I kind of forgot about that. That was 1927. It's almost a hundred years ago. That's pretty wild considering what we're, what we're, you know, what's happening in the world now with technology. Was that, was that, um, well, oh God, uh, Charlie, was Charlie Chaplin in that Metropolis or no? I don't think so. Well, he did a, I can't remember. Uh, nope. Are you just naming the only silent film era person that you're <laughs> Todd, Todd, Confer- Todd Jackson? Todd Jackson? Yeah. You, you guys don't know the silent actor Todd Jackson? He was super famous, like from 1907 to 1913. <laughs> okay, John. Todd so you, Jackson? Ser- you guys seriously? <laughs> 1907's Todd Jackson? Yeah. You should have come up with like Barnaby, <laughs> like something. <laughs> Well, because he was the first one to have like a really short first name. Okay, <laughs> and gotcha. eventually he just became Todd. Gotcha. Uh, other ones, uh, other <laughs> movies that that depict this uh, Blade Runner. I'm sure you guys uh, love Blade Runner, right? Yeah, it's a good, it's movie. A good movie. Terminator, mm-hmm. obviously, this is a big one. Good. Uh, Ex Machina, <laughs> the show Westworld. So yeah, uh, a lot, a lot. Of, <laughs> I agree. These are all good TV shows. Is what I'm saying, like they're all, they're all you know showing the fears of of the time as far as robots and ai taking over and replacing us all of them have that same theme going through them i don't know what the movie you mentioned before uh the spielberg one what was it called artificial intelligence was that what it was yes it was Was that was that a was that like a scary like it's gonna take over the world kind of thing it was kind of like a sci-fi dystopian kind of society where people well what happened was there was a lot of people that had their own little ai robot and their struggle was the robot struggle was thinking that they were human themselves and they weren't they were treated mm. like less than so it tugged at your heartstrings yeah so it's like class stuff you know i'm sure it's like a comment on like again you know like economy or class and consumerism yeah and consumerism and and you know killer robots Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta throw kinda that like, in there. Kind of yeah. like iRobot. Yeah. Where Will Smith was the only one that was smart enough to go, hey, I don't trust these motherfuckers. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, he was Will a rebel. Smith is smart. Yeah. You know, it's a and good thing he didn't slap him with his robot arm. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. He would have smashed his head. <laughs> like, it would have been really gruesome. Will Smith, intuitive. <laughs> <laughs> gonna, gonna hit him with my human hand, not my robot hand. So a lot of our monsters today are more conceptual, like uh, climate change and the consequences of unchecked human consumption. Um, post that would imply that our monsters aren't real, though. Our monsters are pretty real, Kevin. I'm saying yes, that's true. But the uh, monsters but, always been real, Greg. But the monsters, oh, shit. The monster, we're, we're we're. I feel like we're not giving it a face or a body as much. Does that if that makes sense? Uh, well, I know how that ex- when I how do you when explain I explain Freddy Krueger. <laughs> what what tell me what the tell me what the symbolism is there? Uh Nyquil. Just, that was in a time where Nyquil. <laughs> it was really a lot of people were taking Nyquil. <laughs> and cocaine. <laughs> so he has a bunch of people on cocaine. This one guy's like, hey, I got this idea for a movie. And everybody's like, that's really good. Let's make it. And then somehow it made it. And people are like, oh my God, we should make five of these. Five? There's got to be a lot more than that, right? I don't know, actually. I think there's quite a few. Freddy takes Manhattan. (laughs) (laughs) Freddy does the Muppets. (laughs) (laughs) Waka, waka, waka. (laughs) Cookie. Oh, blades in my stomach. (laughs) See cookies I ate come out. (laughs) Cookie monster fall asleep at wrong time. (laughs) I bleed blue. Hey, Freddy! <laughs> Do you want to play in my sandbox? <laughs> That's a lot of blood. <laughs> Elmo didn't know he could bleed this much. <laughs> Elmo lightheaded down. <laughs> Elmo, Elmo gonna lay down here. <laughs> ironically, ironically, Elmo need cookie. <laughs> <laughs> My blood transfusion. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right. And last, uh, post-apocalyptic worlds are another uh, another you know narrative set after a global catastrophe. Often highlight societal decay, the struggle for survival, and the redefinition of human values. And all I wanted to mention was my my favorite book of all time, uh, the Road, The Road. I love The Road. That is my favorite book of all time. It's, well, it's, obviously, you haven't read the Bible. So. It's a tough read. But it's, <laughs> and and no, I have not read the Bible. Uh, I'm saving that for my deathbed. You yeah. know, I'm going to do that whole deathbed conversion thing. So I, Just I, in case. I saw it today. Somebody went to high school. They, they posted a thing, and it said something like, uh, like the world's getting ready for war, and God's getting ready for a wedding. And so, yeah, I know. <laughs> so here's the thing, right? Like, and I'm, I'm not like, I, I grew up a Christian. So I, I thought the story went that there's like Armageddon and then we, we die and then the people go to heaven or there's hell on earth or you go to hell and you spend eternity in hell. But I didn't, I didn't know anybody got married. <laughs> so I really like, who, yeah, know, who's that getting mean? married? I, uh, maybe we're all getting married. Like our souls get married to God. God's getting I ready really for a wedding. Don't know. And, and I was also thinking hmm. that, you know, the, world's been at war since you know ever <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. like so it's like it's always interesting because i'm sure like when world war ii was happening there were a lot of people who thought this is the end this is armageddon this is the end of the world and same thing in world war one and the same thing in the civil war and you know it's like as long as that belief has been around anytime there's like a war it's got to feel like it's armageddon right because your world is being destroyed around you but i think someday They'll be right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Along, <laughs> on a long enough timeline, yeah. Jesus is going right. to come back, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And God will get to celebrate that wedding. Yeah. That um, he's been yeah. prepping for. That that apparently he's 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 ready for, yeah. We're going to marry Jesus. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. He's going <laughs> to put it out on the first night. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's blasphemy. Sorry. No, no, it's not. You're married. It's, con- you know, that's <laughs> <gonna> consummate. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. You are married to the Lord. All right. I hope, last... he, does, I hope he does a romantic proposal. <laughs> last call. Last hope he gives call. me like a rose. <laughs> One single rose and then picks me as the bachelorette. Like in the golden bachelor. <laughs> Monsters are mirrors reflecting our societal values, fears, and prejudices. Yet instead of addressing these core issues, we often externalize them creating others to fear and fight against. From the Salem witch trials to modern xenophobia, humanity has a history of fearing and persecuting the other. Monsters often symbolize this fear, yet we rarely learn. We continue to create societal monsters based on differences instead of embracing diversity and understanding. So cheers to all the monsters out there doing good things. Cheers, good monsters. Hey, you guys are my nightmare. All right, I just want you to know that. Thank you for joining us. Happy Halloween, everybody. Be safe. Make sure you check your candy for razor blades. And LSD. And LSD. Kids, and, if you're listening, and you find LSD, give it to your parents. <laughs> Kids, if you're listening, stop. What are you doing? Yeah. What stop are you listening? Doing? Really, call, call, call child services because you're paying yourself a terrible job. 